Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if stainless steel ice cubes actually work. Now before we continue, did you know that I'm not talking right now? This sentence was created by AI made by the sponsor for this video, Descript. Descript is an all-in-one editing tool that lets you edit your audio or videos as if it were a Word document. You can drag and drop a file you want to edit in the program and it automatically creates the transcript for you. It makes editing extremely simple. For example, this is me editing my last video I posted. Let's say I don't want this sentence here. I just delete it and it edits it out of this video. Water. But here's the real question. Let's say you, you can even take out all the filler words like um, uh, so, which I tend to use a lot when I talk. Now here comes the coolest part. Let's say I didn't mean to say this. Well, you can actually use Descript's AI to generate your own voice and dub over whatever you want to in your text here. Well, you can actually use Descript's AI to tell everyone how awesome you are using whatever new words you want. This is so amazing that this technology even exists. If you want to try it out today, click the link in my description. Now let's get back to our experiment. So we've been using ice to cool things down for a long time, but is it really the best choice to cool something down? One disadvantage of using water ice is that when it melts, it waters down the drink that you put it in. So a lot of people like to use these stainless steel ice cubes. Now the ability for something to absorb heat is called its heat capacity. So that means that in order to find the perfect ice cube, all we have to do is look through a list of specific heat capacities and find the one with the highest heat capacity. So let's just scroll down this list here. We've got lead, lithium, magnesium, mercury. But wait a minute, the thing with the highest heat capacity here is water. So it turns out that water is actually the thing that we should be using all along to make ice because it can absorb a lot of heat with a small change in temperature. In fact, to raise one kilogram of water just one degree Celsius, it takes around 4,000 joules of energy. That's the equivalent energy of going up around four flights of stairs. In fact, if you compare the two, if you took one gram of iron and one gram of water, you could absorb 10 times the energy in the water than the iron to just raise both of them by one degree. But that's not the only thing that makes water good for ice cubes. I mentioned that water has a high heat capacity, but what makes it even better is right when it's around freezing, it has an infinite heat capacity. And that means that it goes through a phase transition from a solid to a liquid. In fact, the energy needed to melt solid ice is extremely high compared to the amount needed to raise the temperature. It takes 334 joules to melt just one gram of water. But here's the real question. Let's say you really love stainless steel ice cubes and you really wanted to use them instead of water so you don't dilute your drink. How cold would you have to cool your stainless steel ice cube in order for it to equal just one regular water ice cube? Well, in order to test that, I'm going to be using liquid nitrogen. Now, liquid nitrogen is probably the coldest you could expect to cool something relatively easily. So I've done some math to calculate how much stainless steel cooled to liquid nitrogen temperatures would you need compared to a certain amount of water. And it turns out to get the same cooling power, you need around 4.5 times the mass of water in stainless steel cooled to liquid nitrogen temperatures. So calculations are great and all, but let's see if this actually works. So first we need to cool our mass of metal down. Now I haven't used stainless steel, but I've used iron in this case. It has about the same heat capacity. So it's at liquid nitrogen temperatures now. This is negative 196 degrees Celsius. Okay, here's our negative 196 degree ball. There we go. Look at that. And then here's our cup of ice. So these two should be able to absorb about the same heat. So that means if I pour some water in them at the same temperature, they should have about the same result in terms of using them as an ice cube. Let's do 130 milliliters in this one, and then 130 milliliters in this one. The one in the liquid nitrogen already got to negative 38 degrees, negative 40 degrees Celsius. So you can see we got to some max negative temperature here down by where the thermocouple is, but up here the water is actually still warm. It's not even that cold. You can see there's ice that formed around the ball in here, but the top's not even that cold. So where the thermocouple is, it's actually frozen in the ice there. So that's why we're getting this negative 25 degrees Celsius here. And this one's just sitting around here 
It's right around freezing now. Even though the iron one was colder at first, eventually they get to the same temperature. Just because it was a bigger ball and the ice was all at the bottom, so it took a while for the heat to distribute evenly across the cup. So we're about tied right now. Both of them are at 0.8 degrees Celsius. Because both of them have solid ice now, we're hitting around the same temperature, right around freezing. Our ice just floated off of our ball here. 25 grams of ice from this one, and about 25, that's around 30 grams of ice from this one. So there you go, this confirms it. If you want a pure stainless steel ice cube, you need around 4.5 times the mass of a regular ice cube, and you have to cool it to liquid nitrogen temperatures, and then it will be about the same as a regular ice cube. But if you keep heating these, you can see that this one actually starts to heat up a little bit more because it can't absorb as much heat because there's a solid block of iron in there instead of water. And remember, water can absorb 10 times the amount of heat than iron. So even in this case, when we try to match them exactly, it turns out that just water ice cubes are better than pure iron. So we've got 11 degree water here and 32 degree water here. This is pretty amazing to see in a real experiment how good ice is at keeping things cold. We had to use 4.5 times the mass of iron and even cool it to liquid nitrogen temperatures, and in the end, the ice still won. Now in some of these stainless steel ice cubes you can buy, they actually fill them with liquid. And I'm guessing it's some water-based thing that they're putting in there because water absorbs a lot of heat. So with the stainless steel ice cubes that also have water inside of them, it kind of combines the best of both worlds. So you get the phase change to happen in there and you get the heat capacity of the water itself, but it's just surrounded by stainless steel. But in the end, for the size of this, there's not a lot of liquid in here. In fact, let's cut it open and see how much liquid is actually inside of this. So here's the volume of water that was in here. So you can see that's just about half the volume is actually filled with the liquid. So it turns out, unless you really don't like water in the drink you're drinking, water ice cubes are way better than stainless steel ice cubes. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to check out theactionlab.com where I sell some Action Lab experiment boxes. And we also sell this really cool Musso black hole painting that my wife painted, where she uses real Musso black on the black hole to make it pop out and be really dark. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.